Hello everybody, uh, welcome to NPTEL online certification course uh, on digital control in SMPCs and FPGA based uh, prototyping. Uh, my name is Aravindan K, I am from Texas Instruments. I am going to cover the module 9, uh, digital control implementation using microcontrollers. Specifically, I am going to talk about the Texas Instruments C2000, uh, C2000 real time microcontroller devices. So, we are going to cover in this lecture the key end applications of C2000 microcontrollers. We are going to look at the detailed view of the device capabilities. We are going to look at the microcontrollers for digital power applications. Uh, then we will look at the portfolio recommended by Texas Instruments uh, C2000 for solar and EV charging. And finally, we will look at key C2000 differentiations from the processing capabilities in uh, C2000 devices. So, where are the places where the C2000 is used in real time control? The C2000 devices are used in multiple end applications. As you can see that uh, we play a critical role in energy delivery, uh, primarily in charging infrastructure, solar and wind power. We play a critical role in digital power, primarily in telecom server, AC DC rectifiers, uninterruptible power supplies, DC DC converters. Also, we have uh, applications that are spanning across the motor control end application as well like appliances, drones, e-bikes and also in industrial drives like automation, robotics. Also in the automotive world, we are also involved in many of the uh, charging uh, station based applications, uh, HV, DC, DC, onboard charging, lighting and also in traction drive. So, the C2000 uh, real time control is used across multiple end applications and it spans across both digital power and motor control. What is the key identity of uh, C2000 real time MCU? The, uh, uh, the device uh, primarily has been uh, is one of the broadest real time control platform because our software is compatible across low, mid, high uh, at various price points. That means all our software that we create for uh, low cost devices. Uh, to low power, low performance devices, to high power devices, high performance devices are completely compatible. So, that provides you future proof performance and we also deliver high quality products. We also have a lot of innovation embedded inside our C2000 microcontroller. We are the industry's fastest real time signal chain sense compute control processor. We also enable fast switching GAN and SIG today. We also have been in this market for 25 years. We have a lot of experience in digital control and we also have numerous reference designs, hardware, software to accelerate development. So far, millions of units have been shipped in automotive and industrial applications already. We have thousands of customers worldwide. Our devices are of high quality and we also have multi-source fab strategy to make sure that we have safe supply and future expansion. So, to just give you a brief overview of our real time controllers, what are the key things that the C2000 devices have? The C2000 devices have highly accurate sensing capability. That means we have good 12 16 bit ADCs which can operate up to 24 channels. We also have quadrature encoder and capture logic. On the processing side, we have high performance processing with the capability to do floating point operations, parallel multi core architecture instructions optimized to do math operations, trigonometric operations capable of delivering up to 925 MIPS. Our PWMs are highly flexible and they can support up to 32 outputs. We also have the PWMs tightly coupled with sensing domain for fast response time. In addition to all these sense process control capability, we also have a good integrated communications available on the device. We support CAN, CANFD, LIN, UART, SPI, I2C, Ethernet, Ethercat. So, we provide all this integrated communications as well. So, these four pieces actually provide one of the best scalable ultra low latency real time controller platform that is highly efficient for high efficiency in power electronics and high switching frequency capabilities. The couple of other things that also are very unique to C2000 is that we have 25 years of experience in real time control systems. 
and we also support quite a lot of software that can help you to kickstart your development. We have good software libraries, reference designs and also we make functionally safety compliant devices which enable you to actually go and meet some of the automotive or industrial safety needs. In addition to basic sense process control interface, we also add a lot of innovation into our devices. For example, the configurable logic block for peripheral customization can replace many of the FPGA needs when you need to really customize your design. We also have fast serial interface, which is again a Texas Instruments proprietary for high speed communication and ERAD for enhanced diagnostics and profiling capability. So, if you really look at our C2000 real time microcontroller portfolio, we are, we are currently classifying our devices at two types, generation 2 and generation 3. And then based on the performance, we are actually classifying the devices as entry performance, mid performance and high performance. The devices like F2802X, F2803X, F2806X, these devices are actually classified as entry performance because they have MIPS in the range of 150. Then devices between 150 to 600 MIPS, we classify them as mid performance. In this category, we have F2837XS, we have uh, F2838XS, then we have F2804X and we also have the newly introduced F2803X. So, these devices give you performance in the range of 150 to 600 MIPS. Beyond 600 MIPS, we have two devices F2837XD and F2838XD which give you a performance of 800 MIPS and 925 MIPS which actually can be used for really high end uh, applications. If you look at the memory sizes, the, uh, the low end variants have a smaller footprint about 128 KB of flash whereas the mid range has flash up to 1.5 MB and the high performance ones have flash of 1 MB and 1.5 MB. So, as you can see that the C2000 real time microcontroller portfolio is very vast ranging from very low cost low MIPS part to a very highly advanced and highly MIPS consuming parts which can span across multiple end applications that you want to build. Another key interesting aspect I want to highlight is that the code and the peripherals are compatible across these devices. This means that if you make a software for let us say F2802X and you want to scale it to F2838X, it is scalable because you can recompile your code with minimum change and you can get your software working. Similarly, you can scale your software from a high end device to low end device including the capability to use the peripherals. So, this compatibility gives customers a wide range of options to build applications using the C2000 microcontroller. Now, if you look at in detail the differences between these devices, this table will give you a good snapshot of how the devices vary. For example, if you start with F2802X, it is actually an 100 MIPS part whereas F2802X has capability to do 200 MIPS because it has got a C28X and a CLA. A CLA is nothing but another coprocessor that gives you same performance as C28X. If you go to F2803X, it actually gives you performance all the way up to 240 MIPS because it can run at 120 megahertz and there is a two pro processors the C28X and CLA. Now, if you look at the control IPs, you can see that there are 14 channels PWM in F2802X, but it goes up to 16 channels in F2802X and F2802X. So, as you see these devices have small changes in their capability and they can actually span across multiple applications. If you look at the ADCs, right, we have two ADCs in F2802X, whereas we have three ADCs in F2802X and F2802X. Some of the com communication IPs also will vary across these devices with the smaller changes between them to make sure that these are all fine tuned for specific end application. Now, if you look at the mid and high end options, we have three devices in the mid to high end options starting with F2803X which is a 240 MIPS part, the F2837X is 800 MIPS part and F2838X is about 925 MIPS part. Now, if you look at what kind of architecture that is there inside, if you see the uh, device F2803X, it has got one CLA whereas F2837X has got two CLA whereas F2838X also has two CLAs. The 37X and 38X have two CPUs of C28X and two CPUs of CLA which automatically gives you 800 MIPS. 
whereas F2838X has in addition a communications manager that gives you another 125 MHz. So overall, F2838X gives you 925 MHz, F2837X gives 800 MHz and F2803X gives you 240 MHz. Again, if you look at the PWMs, there are 16 channel PWMs in F2A003X going up to 24 channels in F2A37X going all the way up to 32 in case of F2A38X. Similarly, ADCs as you can see as the performance of the device scales up, the number of ADCs on the chips also scale up. So this wide variation of uh, capabilities and processing power actually helps you to build applications of varying requirements across all these devices. Now let us look at the detailed block diagram of each of these devices. For example, let us start with F2A004X. This device is optimized for power control application. It actually has 100 megahertz clock running at 100 megahertz. It has got 200 MIPS for DSP processing power because it has got one C28X core and one CLA core. It has got floating point and trigonometric math unit which again accelerates your processing requirements. We also have advanced actuation and design flexibility with the fourth generation EPWM that generates one of the most advanced switching techniques for increased efficiency and power density. Similarly, if you look at the capability of us to support, we actually support the devices in three different packages. We also have good software support for this device in terms of the C2000Ware software and application SDKs. We also provide the launch pad and experiment kit to work on this device to build your end application. Next device I want to highlight is F28003X. This is another interesting part because it has got high performance for power control applications. This is again a 240 MIPS part, it has got one C28X at 120 megahertz and a CLA core at 120 MHz. This can actually do lot more arith arithmetic operations because this has got fast integer division, it has got a floating point unit, it has got a trigonometric math unit and also has capability to, to support a non-linear PID through additional instructions that we have added to the trigonometric math unit. It also has rich digital options, for example, it can support CAN-FD and also it has got what is known as the CLB, two CLB tiles which actually helps you to build some custom logic for your application. This device also comes in multiple packages. As you can see, we support in four different packages with good support for software through our SDKs and C2000Ware. Now let us move on to the high performance devices. The first high performance device that I want to cover is the F2838XD. This device is actually a very high performance device with rich connectivity. Compared to the previous devices, you can see that this device has a communications manager which can help you real time connectivity. Primarily, what are the connectivity it can support are Ethercat, Ethernet and it can also have uh, support for CAN FD, CAN, USB and so on. This 125 megahertz communication manager gives you the additional 125 MIPS on top of two C28X cores which are running each at 200 megahertz and two CLA which are running at 200 megahertz. So overall this device gives you 925 MIPS of performance with a good connectivity capability like Ethercat, Ethernet as well. And also this device also has functional safety compliance. So it can actually meet ACLD and CL3 capability. This is one of our most leading and high performance devices that we have. And this can scale into many, many end applications that need significant MIPS for processing. The device F2837X is very similar to F2838X. Only difference is that the communication manager and the connectivity pieces are not there in this device. So this device gives you 800 MIPS of performance. So this is achieved through two C28X DSP each running at 200 megahertz and two CLA core each running at 200 megahertz giving you totally 800 MIPS of performance. It has four differential 16 bit ADCs, one mega samples per second each. And then we also have a 3x 12 bit DAC. It also has the trigonometric math unit, which also can accelerate the trigonometric math operations. Again, this is also can meet functional safety compliance of ACLD and CIL3 and available in multiple packages with good support in c 2 support so software and application SDKs. The F2837XS is a cut down version of F2838X. 
basically this has one C28X at 200 megahertz and one CLA at 200 megahertz giving you totally 400 MIPS of processing power. It has got four differential 16 bit ADCs as, as I mentioned before this also has support for trigonometric math unit as well as it can also do a uh, lot of computation capabilities and with support for uh, floating point unit as well. So, this device comes in three packages and it is also functionally safety compliant for ACLD and SIL3. Now, if you just try to categorize these devices by flash size and performance, this is the kind of picture we will actually get. So, all the devices which I talked about which are of low MIPS actually have less, uh, less, less um, uh, flash size up to 256 KB. The devices that we talked about in the range of 150 to 600 MIPS they have flash up to almost up to uh, about 1 MB and then devices which are beyond 600 MIPS have flash capability of 1 MB and 1.5 MB. So, if you look at all our devices clearly we can we can see that there are devices with low memory footprint, uh, high memory footprint, low MIPS, high MIPS different capabilities of our peripherals. What this makes sure is that if you are trying to build an application ranging from something in solar to EV to any other application you have wide range of portfolio of devices to pick up and as I had mentioned before all these devices are software compatible that means you can build your software and scale and migrate seamlessly across all these devices. Now, let us look at the portfolio for solar energy this is an example of showcasing which devices goes into which kind of applications. So, if you look at our low, uh, low performance devices like F2H02X, 03X they can be used for arc detection, DC optimization, rapid shutdown and so on. For a micro inverter or a string inverter kind of applications you have devices like F2H003X or F2H004X that actually needs meets the needs of these processing capabilities. Suppose you want to actually implement string or central inverters uh, with multi level multiple MPPTS, bidirectional energy storage systems and also if you want to do multi channel arc detection you have devices like F2A38X and F2A37X which actually has the power and the peripheral capability to meet these kind of end application. So, if you see that we have devices capable of covering the entire spectrum of applications needed for solar energy. So, this is an example of C2000 proposal in solar energy. Suppose you are building a large central and string inverter for a large commercial uh, and utility kind of area. So, your power range will be 100 kilowatt to few milliwatts, megawatts sorry. Uh, so, in this case you will actually have interleaved multi level boost kind of a topology. So, in this case we actually recommend 2x of F2837x that means you need the 2 times F2837x device to support this kind of application. Suppose you are looking for a 3 phase string inverter which is for a commercial rooftop typically less than 50 kilowatts. In this case we recommend one or two devices like we recommend F2A37X plus a combination of F2A004X. Suppose you are interested in a single phase string inverter for residential then it, the topology is very simple. So, you need a simple boost topology and in this case devices like F2A0039 or F2A0049 will be very useful. For a micro inverter kind of an application where it is for residential applications then the requirements are still again low MIPS. So, we can actually go with F2H0039 or F2H0049. For a DZ optimizer again devices like F2H0025 sh should be sufficient for the performance need. Similarly, for arc protection we can actually use F2H0039 or F2H0025. If you clearly see that there are multiple devices that TA has designed to meet multiple end applications. And beauty of these devices is that as I said before you can actually scale across in terms of performance and peripheral capability and you can build multiple of these applications you either using one device which is powerful or you can use multiple low cost devices to meet some of these application needs. Now, if you look at the portfolio for EV charging again we have uh, multiple ranges of devices again here uh, the ones that need simple control schemes which need low uh, MIPS uh, power like F2H02X, F2H03X these can be used for simple control schemes because they have sufficient number of PWM, HPWM. If you need a medium or complex control scheme where you need many EPWMs and HRPWMs like three level bidirectional topologies 
you have devices like F2H003X and F2H004X which can meet these end application needs. Suppose you want to go for a more complex control schemes like three level bidirectional complex topologies, then you can actually choose F2H37X or F2H3XD devices. The peripheral mix of all these devices are also created in such a way that they can fit into all of these end applications in a very cost optimized manner. Now we have seen wide range of C2000 devices and their capabilities. Now the question arises why you need to choose C2000. So there are three or four key aspects in terms of why C2000 is so powerful for a control application. The first and key part is that we have an accurate current and voltage sensing with very fast and precise ADCs. As I mentioned before, we have capability to do up to 3.4 mega samples per second ADCs. We have support up to 3 to 4 ADCs in each of our devices. We also have capability to do ADC post processing. That means we can do some processing post uh, taking the ADC value, which actually would, would help you in saving several cycles. Second is our device and the core C28 score is highly optimized for control applications. I talked about the control law accelerator and the TMU. They help you to uh, implement control algorithms in a much quick manner so that your overall latency is much lesser. That means once you sense and do the processing, you can quickly get the result that you want to compute. We also have capability to support floating point unit, which, has, uh, which can take care of your coding concern of scaling, overflow and so on. The CLA is again an independent unit that runs in parallel with C28X which is highly optimized for control loop computation. So overall these kind of capabilities actually enable you with higher performance that you can actually need to compute for high performance PH, uh, PFC and so on. Now if you look at our PWMs, the PWMs have provide additional flexibility because they can actually manage high frequency switching frequencies software programmable and also they can manage work up to four different compare events. So all this capability of EPWMs that they have that provide good switching capability and faster response to whatever we need to actually control on the output side. In addition to some of these things, we also have built in analog comparators which actually helps you faster response time. So this capability can enable you with even 50 nanosecond pin to pin response time. We also have capability to trip any or all PWMs asynchronously to the system clock. We also have very capability to tightly integrate the PWM with ADCs so that overall whatever you are actually sensing, processing and control, the overall latency is very much reduced in using C2000. So if you look at each of these peripherals, they have been carefully designed and differentiated so that we can actually provide a faster response as well as lower latency time. Now let us look at the processing capabilities. What are the uniqueness that we have inside the device, right? So in terms of first the C28X core, the C28X core has specialized instructions that are used by the compiler to save cycles. For example, trigonometric math operations or you want to do multiplication, division, all that is highly optimized using our core. Normally the ARM CPU will take at least 2 to 3x the megahertz to match the execution time of a C28 system. So the core itself, the C28 CPU itself has good efficiency for control cycle. On top of this core, we have added additional differentiations that I will show next, which how it improves our processing capability. So if you look at some of the processing elements that are there, so on top of the C28 core, we have floating point unit, we have control law accelerator, trigonometric math unit, fast integer division and VCU, which further enhance the instruction set so that the computations can be done much faster. So these are called as extended, in, extended instruction set to the c 2 score, but they provide dramatic improvement in processing capability. Now let us look at the floating point unit. The floating point unit significantly improves our performance. For example, if you take a complex FFT, 1024 point complex FFT on our C28X score, we take about 141k cycles. Whereas on an FPU, which is a single position uh, floating point takes only 53K. Whereas FPU 64, which is a double position floating point unit takes about 98K. So immediately you can see that by addition of the FPU, we have actually improved the performance of FFT computation by 2.6X 
on FPU and 1.43x on FPU64 which is a double precision. So by adding all these small floating point units, we have actually improved the performance of the C288X core. The device that I talked earlier, the F2838X has the double precision FPU which can further enhance your computational accuracy. If you look at the real FFT again, you can see that almost 2.5x improvement we get with addition of FPU and 1.68x uh, improvement with FPU 64. Now let us look at what is CLA. CLA is another co processor that is in running concurrently with the main CPU. It can free up the performance of the C28X. The uniqueness of CLA is that it can access independently the peripheral registers. It can do math intensive operations like cos, sin, division, exponential, square root and so on. And it can also directly has interface to PWM and ADC. What, what this drives is that the CLA can quickly take the data from ADC, do the processing and drive your PWM, saving lot of cycles and freeing up the bandwidth of C28X. For example, a motor AC induction control which takes about 888 cycles in CPU is reduced to about 640 cycles in CLA. So we can automatically see that there is a 1.4x improvement in performance. Similarly, for a power control 3 pole 3 zero, like a CPU will take about 68 cycles where the CLA takes about 52 cycles. So whatever performance that we get in C28X, we can get a better performance with CLA and it can run in concurrent with the C28X. How does this actually operate? The operation is very simple. The CLA can run control loops independent of the CPU. It has access to the ADC. It can read ADC result register in the same cycle as the ADC sample is completed. There is little or no delay in processing the data because there is no much context switching. It has its own program and data memory. So it can actually pass information between it and the CPU. So CLA also can be triggered by CPU and can fire interrupts to the CPU. So if you see the CLA has access to all the important control peripherals, it can do processing and it can independently run control loop. So when we have a device with C28X and CLA, that is how we actually get double the MIPS even though the processor is running at let us say 100 megahertz part, if you have C28X and CLA, we can actually go up to 200 MIPS of processing capability. The next interesting addition that we have done recently is the trigonometric math unit. The trigonometry math unit has been added to add additional instructions which can help you to compute sine, cos, tan in a much faster way. We take only about 4 to 5 cycles to do all these trigonometric operations whereas in our C28X traditional CPU this would have taken us 10x times. Like for example the path transform with devices which has TMU now can be done with 85% improvement. So this saves significant cycles from the processing point of view. Again, the TMU is additional instructions that are added on top of the C28X and enabling TMU is much easier. If you are calling a sine or a cos function and if the device has TMU, automatically the compiler will pick up the instructions and make sure that your sine and cos is highly optimized. The next one that we have added is fast integer division. The fast integer division actually gives you support for many different types of divisions for types like truncated, modulus, Euclidean and of varying data size. So you can do a 16 bit by 16 bit, 16 bit by 32 bit, 32 bit by 32 bit and so on. And typically we have seen that with the addition of this fast integer division, we are able to actually reduce our cycles consumption for division almost by 3x. For example, typically our division takes about 60 cycles in a C28x that has come down to 14 to 15 cycles in using fast integer division. Again, as I mentioned before, Enabling fast integer division is much easier because you can actually use this through compiler intrinsics and automatically the code gets replaced with fast integer division instructions. So all these uh, added capabilities are also supported through examples in our software called C2000Ware. So these unique additions that we have done to the CPU actually makes the CPU much faster and reduces the overall latency and this is one of the key capability of C2000 device. So overall, uh, I think the device portfolio in this topic, we have covered the device portfolio and the key processing capabilities of C2000. For any questions or any support that you need in future, you can actually visit uh, C2000 TI E2E support forum for any questions related to any of the topics that we have covered here. Thank you.